Hey guys, I'm super excited to be able to finally do a Power Rangers Buyer's Guide. We're doing it on the Lightning Collection figure specifically, but we are gonna do a little comparison against the original Bandai flip heads. Otherwise, we got a lot of releases to get through, so stick around and we're gonna get right into it. So here we have every Mighty Morphin Power Ranger Lightning Collection figure so far, as well as the original Bandai flip heads. And so uh, these are not my original ones that I had as a kid. Those are long gone now, but I got this set as a gift a little while back and it's kind of cool to see them all together. So let me get these out of the way first. And here is the Mighty Morphin Black Ranger in release order. So we actually got the shielded version first. This was a Walgreens exclusive. And then we got our standard version and then a metallic. This one is a, a relatively recent solo release of Adam and then finally the remastered version. On our shielded one, his hands are a gripping hand and a flat hand. He also comes with a fist and another gripping hand. He of course has the power axe and this part can move down. We have a blast effect for his power axe in cannon mode and finally his civilian head. After our armored release, we got the standard release and if you compare the two, they do look pretty much exactly the same with the obvious difference being the armor. The standard release has a pair of gripping hands as well as a pair of fists. In his holster, he has a sidearm in gun mode, and then otherwise he has it in blade mode as well. Of course, again, we have a power axe, another blasting accessory, same exact shape, just a different color this time. And finally, our civilian head for this release. Our next Black Ranger was the Metallic Black Ranger, and this one is actually one that has an updated head compared to the original. You can see just from this part how this pops up in a way that this one doesn't just because it's of how different it is. And you can see that it is a bit different just looking at the two. This one is a bit more rounded compared to this one. Otherwise, the body is pretty much exactly the same. Metallic Black Ranger comes with gripping hands as well as these tiger claw style hands. Blast effect, again, same design, different color. Comes with one of the Zia crystals and of course the power axe. And this axe does actually have a slightly different color. It's not a straight black. Here's a previous power axe that you can compare and see that the metallic one does have a bit of a pearl color to it. And for this Black Ranger, we actually have as Adam instead of as Zack. This is our next Mighty Morphin Black Ranger release. It's definitely using the updated head from our metallic release and otherwise the body pretty much is the same thing. So he's got gripping hands. He also comes with a pair of fists. He's also the first one in this lineup to have his sidearm actually being in fully closed mode. He comes with both blade blaster forms. And then he comes with this silly like water pistol thing uh, that actually was supposed to go with Zack, but they released him with an Atom head instead. Here's a blasting effect for that weapon. And then here is the civilian head for Adam on this release. And here's a comparison of the two Adam heads. They do appear to be the same mold and just with different hairstyles. And finally, our remastered Black Ranger. So let's do a quick comparison against our previous release. And they do appear to be very, very similar. The helmets look exactly the same to me at least. And the bodies do appear also to be pretty much the same. Uh, really the difference that we're seeing is the paint job. You can see that the diamonds are a bit of a different shape. Uh, we have a slightly skinnier diamond over here. We also have more paint apps uh, kind of coming up above right here as opposed to on this side where it's just fully black. We also have more paint apps on the belt and a better view of what the power coin should look like on his morpher compared to this one. And this appears to be the same as on our other releases too, where you just can't really see it that well. And the other difference on the remastered bodies are the dropped hips. So you can do that. And theoretically that should give you a little bit more articulation. The other interesting thing to point out is just how much wider that the whites are on like the boots as an example because comparing it to our Walgreens armored Black Ranger, you can see that the newer one is way wider and that the one on the left looks a little bit faded, a little bit dirty, but I've not really left this out in the sun or anything like that. Here's another comparison. This one is our uh, first release Mighty Morphin Black Ranger. And this is compared to our last release of the Mighty Morphin Black Ranger as well. You can also see that the diamonds on the boots are actually a little bit differently shaped on the remastered version as well. And I suspect to see the same thing with all the rest of the remastered versions. The remastered version comes with this really nice energy effect that you can surround him in. The remastered has gripping hands. He's got fists and he's got, these are all new hands that every remastered ranger has. And these are for holding this tiny, tiny morpher. That's really cool. So you can see it's got a little grip on there for him to be able to hold, depending on the pose that you want to put him in. Of course, he comes with a power blaster. And for the sake of comparison, here's our original power blaster. They do look to be pretty much the same. Our tip is yellow instead of silver. Otherwise, besides some slightly different paint apps, it is the same 
weapon. And finally his head. So let's do, go to do a comparison of the other Zack heads. So here are all three Zack heads that we have in order of release. And you can see on the newer one, he does appear to be a slightly different uh, skin tone, as well as having a uh, just an entirely different sculpt uh, compared to the first two. How accurate they are, I don't really feel like any of these really look like the actual actor himself. Um, but this is what we got. The remastered Black Ranger also comes with all three versions of the sidearm. Because we're going over so many different figures, I'm gonna just post up the prices that you're gonna find them for on eBay right about now. And with that said, as far as the Black Ranger goes, I don't think there's really any reason to get anything other than the remastered Black Ranger, with the exception of the armored Black Ranger, of course. But even then, you can mostly make him using the remastered Red Ranger, which we'll get to later on in the video. Next up is our Mighty Morphin Pink Ranger. Of course, we have our Bandai. We have our first release, our metallic cell shaded a second release but this time as cat and then finally our remastered versions our first release pink comes with gripping hands that are specifically for the bow as well as a flat hand and a fist our bow itself an arrow and an arrow that's been fired like with fx finally here is our civilian head for kimberly our metallic has the same set of hands on the figure as well as the additional hands that it comes with comes with the same bow but like with the black ranger it's got a kind of a pearlescent uh, look to it. This also applies to the arrow. Here's the original arrow for a comparison. It's a very subtle difference. We of course have the same arrow slash energy effect, although this time in a different color. We also get Herzio Crystal Piece, and finally the cat civilian head. Both figures are using pretty much the same exact body mold, and really the only difference is the fact that this one is made with uh, different materials because they're doing the metallic scheme on this one. Our cell shaded release is yet another release of the same pink body, this time with the, of course, cell shaded appearance on it. This is the only cell shaded Power Ranger that they've released so far. I don't think it's done very well, so they may not be releasing any more like this. But as far as accessories go, the hands that come with it are exactly the same both on the figure and the ones that it comes with. This time at least, we get all three forms of the Blade Blaster, whereas with the first two, we only get the gun form. We of course get the bow, but this time it's totally pink. And in fact, it's a bit opaque as well. You can kind of see through it, at least in real life. Our arrow this time is also fully pink. And our arrow energy effect looks almost exactly the same as the previous one, except this time we got a little bit of blue in it. And this one does not come with a civilian head at all. Our next release is one that was actually part of a two pack with her as well as her Zeo form. However, it's the same exact body mold as the original one. All four of these are the same exact body mold. This time though, we do have an updated head. The differences in the head you can see are um, pretty clear to me. The newer one is much more rounded. The mouth is a better shape. And you can also see up top how different the, the heads are. However, between these two releases and many pictures that I've seen online, Hasbro had a hard time getting the pink of the chest uh, right to be matched with you know the arms and everything else. It oftentimes looks more purple than it looks pink. I got lucky with my releases because they still look pretty pink. Uh, however, they are a little bit purple even for my own too. Additionally, she actually has a different set of gripping hands. However, they still basically do the same thing, which are to hold the bow and arrow. The first three releases though have the gripping hand that's for like holding the bow. However, the extra hands are still the same exact extra hands that we got with the other four. We have our same arrow, we have our same bow. This time though, we also do get this cat accessory with the green glowing eyes. And finally our cat head. Here's a comparison of the two Mighty Morphin cat heads. Her sidearm is only in gun form as well. Last but not least, we have our remastered Pink Ranger and they've done a heck of an update on this one right here. Our head appears to be the same exact one as our, as our previous release. This is not a bad thing in any way. The previous release had a perfectly fine head. On our new release though, we have quite a few updates. So besides the paint updates, like we saw with the Black Ranger, you can see the coin better, things like that. We actually have arms with a lot more articulation. So not only do we have bicep swivel, but we do have double jointed elbows as well. And that's a huge change from our first four releases where they all have the same exact single 90 degree bend and no bicep swivel at all. So great job there. The legs do appear to be the same mold, but I don't think there was really uh, much of a problem with the legs to begin with. And the other major thing is that the uh, the chest is definitely very pink. It definitely does not appear to be purple in any sense to me, at least in my eyes. 
and so they did a really good job there too. Unlike the Black Ranger, the diamond shape does appear to be the same as pretty much the other ones, with the exception of the cell shaded one. Like the other remastered Rangers, we do have the energy effect that can surround the Ranger. The remastered uh, comes with the same gripping hands as our previous release, and of course the same fist and the same flat hand as we've seen before. However, we also get these new hands, which are of course for holding the Morpher. Here's our Morpher, same as the Black Ranger one, except obviously with the Pterodactyl coin instead. We've got our handle on there, and it looks good. We have all three forms of the Blade Blaster, of course, our bow, and our arrow. This time we don't have the arrow slash lightning effect, but that's okay. For the sake of comparison, here are our two power bows. You can see that the paint job on my original power bow is really poorly done, and it looks pretty solid on the remastered. And last but not least, here are the two Kim heads for the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger suits. I don't think either of these really look that much like the actress, but here we go. One of the other major differences on the remastered version, besides having the bicep swivel and the double jointed elbows, is the fact that actually you get one more bit of articulation right here because you get forearm and your wrist swivel. So with the regular versions, which is pretty much all the other ones, you get the single joint here, you get your wrist and then you've got your regular arm articulation and that's it. So you get way more points of articulation on the newer one and that's really nice to have. And because of that, you get a slightly more prominent uh, glove appearance uh, since you can kind of see it on there. But then on the other ones, it's really just kind of like at a point where it's just painted and that's it. So definitely looks way better overall with the remastered versions. There actually is one more pink ranger, but this one I didn't quite want to include because it's April O'Neil from the Ninja Turtles. This is from the crossover figures that they did. And the real major difference between this and the other ones is the fact that it doesn't have the skirt. Otherwise, it's pretty close to being uh, like the cat version because we have the updated helmet. However, it does seem like the chest is matched perfectly with the pink color that it should be, unlike the cat one where it's still slightly um, more purple than it is pink. So that's kind of cool there. Otherwise, the rest of the body is exactly what you would expect it to be. As far as accessories on this one, uh, it only comes with the uh, blade blaster in blaster mode. Here is our bow for April. This one is actually uh, unique in the color scheme. Uh, we don't have any of these that are this particular uh, opaque silver clear-ish look. The closest we have is the metallic cat one, but you can see it is still pretty different. We have our arrow, pretty standard there. Our arrow slash energy effect, the same exact hands, of course. What's fun is that it actually comes with this camera and microphone because, you know, April O'Neil is a reporter, so it's neat that it comes with that. And then here is our April civilian head. And that actually looks pretty good. And here are the prices that you can get these uh, respective Pink Rangers for. At the time of this recording, the remastered ones are still brand new and out and available now. So I would say get that one. That's still the best one of the bunch and don't pay more than retail. The metallic one is getting harder to find. So that's the one that's uh, more expensive. The other one should be approximately the same price. And next up is our Mighty Morphin Blue Ranger. And as you can see, it's going to be our shortest section because we only have three releases in the Lightning Collection. So this is in release order and our first blue ranger over here like the others only came with the blade blaster in gun mode he currently has gripping hands and has a pair of fists he comes with both versions of his signature weapon both in staff mode and then in the individual mode and it comes with this energy slash lightning effect that can wrap around the weapon and finally here is our head for billy so not a super great likeness it's kind of there it kind of isn't uh, but that was our first release, Billy. Our second release was effectively the same thing in terms of accessories. So the sidearm is in gun mode. He has the gripping hands and then he comes with the fists. We have his weapon in both forms again. Uh, however, this time in the metallic mode, we do have the somewhat opaque appearance as well. The energy effect this time is a little bit different, but still blue. We also, of course, get his Zeo crystal. And finally, our second Billy civilian head. Also doesn't quite look like him, but here you go. Finally, our remastered Blue Ranger. So as with the first two, we have these energy effects that you can put the character inside of. He has the gripping hands already, pair of fists, of course. And as with the other two, a special set of hands that are specifically meant for holding the Morpher. And our Morpher is just like the first two with the obvious exception of the color and the power coin being the Triceratops. The remastered version, of course, comes with all three versions of the sidearm. The signature weapon uh, remains the same, having it in two different parts like this. And for the sake of comparison, the old one is on the bottom and the new one is on top. Uh, we do see a nice color change where we have gold coins instead of the silver appearance here. 
Mine's a little bit bent, but nothing a little hot water won't fix. And finally, our third Billy civilian head. This one actually, I would say, looks the closest to the actor himself. So I'd say that's actually a pretty solid job. And as you can see, he's not wearing glasses, but he comes with a pair of glasses that you can put on him. And it's nice because these are actually like real glasses, unlike the ones that came on the retro Peter Parker head that look kind of goofy. These ones are meant to look like real glasses, and I think they do a really good job there. The glasses do clip into the sides, and that looks really good. And what's nice is that even without the glasses, it's not super noticeable the indentations that are there for the glasses themselves. So they did a really good job designing that. I'm actually really impressed. And obviously we want to see all three side by side. Here are all three of our Billy heads. And I personally feel like the middle one is the worst. Um, the first one isn't too bad in comparison, uh, but I would say that the newest one is definitely the best by a long shot. And like with our first two releases, we get an updated head. The obvious part of that is the mouth being uh, different. I think the visor part, the above part is uh, very similar. It looks like it's maybe a little bit smaller, but the left side, it doesn't look too bad either, but obviously having it even more accurate is more ideal. And uh, like with the Black Ranger, we have a similar thing where we have more white paint on this side than we do. The diamond is a little bit longer and thinner. We have more paint apps on the belt and the legs remain pretty much the same. Diamonds again are uh, a little bit longer and thinner and the, the boots and the whites are definitely seem to be a little bit wider than on our first version. If it's not clear on camera, uh, in real life, the new blue is actually a slightly different shade of blue than our first one. I feel like the, uh, the one on the left, our first release is more of a royal, a deep blue. And then the one on our right is more of a navy blue. And I think I prefer the newer one for sure. I think they did a great job on that. And here's the pricing for really these two on eBay, because again, uh, this one is uh, the current one that you can buy right now for retail. So definitely uh, get that one. And you will notice though that these two are a little bit more expensive because uh, again, there's only three of these releases. So uh, being that there's fewer, then that means that they're more sought after. So something to keep in mind. Next up, the Yellow Ranger. So as you can see here, we have five different Yellow Rangers to look over, kind of like with our Pink Ranger, which is pretty cool that we have this many so far. And of course we have these in release order. Starting with the left, the Blade Blaster only came in gun mode with the first releases. You can see that she's got gripping hands and she also comes with one flat hand, kind of like the Pink Ranger, and then one other hand, which is meant to grip her weapon. Speaking of weapons, she does of course come with her two weapons and she comes with these effect pieces that can attach to the blades of her weapons. And finally, here is our civilian head of Trini. It's not a terrible resemblance. I, I think it's a much stronger resemblance to the actress uh, compared to the other three releases that we've seen so far. Next up is our metallic release. And if you couldn't tell, we're following the same pattern where we have our gripping hands on the figure and we have the same flat hand and the same second gripping hand. We have our same weapons, but this time in metallic form. So it's a little bit opaque. Just a quick comparison against the original one. Our energy effect is a little bit different this time, but still fits on top of one of the blades and you only get the one this time. We get our Zeo crystal, of course, and our first Aisha head. This one is sporting the longer braided hair. It's not really that close of a likeness, in my opinion, to the original actress. After that, we had our second release of Aisha, and this release is actually part of a two-pack release with Scorpina. Her blade blaster is in blaster mode. She also comes with the bladed version, but not a closed version. She, of course, has her signature weapons, the same set of hands as her first two releases, the same energy effects as the first release, but in a different color, and finally, our second Aisha head. So I also don't think this one is a very great likeness of the original actress. And here are the two heads side by side. And it kind of looks like they are different molds face wise, but it's kind of hard to tell uh, between the paint apps and the hair um, being so different. And really with these three first releases, they are all basically the same exact figure. Uh, with the obvious exception of the difference with the metallic and the yellow between the first release and this release are actually slightly different in terms of the actual yellow color itself. This is a brighter yellow. This is more of a kind of a golden rod yellow. So and I actually think that this color is a better color than this one. Next up is our Yellow Ranger from the comic book two pack uh, that came with a Red Ranger Trini. And you can see that it's using the same base body as the male Rangers. And uh, to me, what's kind of cool is that to me, this is actually more accurate than 
than these ones because the original was a male character. So uh, in a lot of ways, this is more accurate than, than having the female body. But with that said, uh, again, it's basically the same. Uh, unfortunately, the head is uh, also the same in the sense that it's scaled for the female body and not for the male body. It's not as prominent as on the uh, Trini Red Ranger, which you'll see in a second, but just something to note. Otherwise, our yellow Jason comes with the gripping hands already, a pair of fists, all three versions of the sidearm, of course, the signature weapons. But what's really interesting about these ones is actually the bottoms are fully closed off. And what I mean by that, here's the original one, and it's open because this is meant to combine to make the howling cannon or the or the power cannon. And so that's supposed to be, you know, one of the places that uh, the energy would shoot out of. But we don't have that with this comic book version of our Sabertooth Tiger weapon. We do have the same energy effect, although a different color than the first two releases. And finally, our comic book Jason head. It's actually, I think, a pretty decent likeness to the original actor. And of course, finally, our remastered version. So of course, we're going to see our energy effects. She has two gripping hands and her additional hands include the flat hand still, but this time at least a fist, which is nice, as well as the two special hands for holding the morpher. And here's the morpher, same as the previous designs, but still looks cool. And it's still really impressive to me how much detail you can actually see in that coin, considering how small that just is. And our signature weapons, of course. And what's interesting with these ones is that not only is the coin inside colored gold, but this is similar to the comic release where we don't have the, uh, the holes for the power cannon mode. Uh, if you were to attach it all together. So that's interesting, uh, not a big deal to me, but interesting thing to note. Of course, she has all three versions of the sidearm. And finally, our second trainee head. And I, I like the hairstyle. It is cool that they are using this different hairstyle. Here is the original head. And I honestly think they're kind of using the same head with just a different paint job. And I don't have a problem with that. Um, or if it is different, then it looks like it's just the chin that's a little bit different. It looks like they brought it in just a little bit. Otherwise, the, the nose, mouth, cheeks pretty much look the same. And yeah, I think they did a good job on that. Finally, comparing the original versus the current remastered version, uh, you can see that the obvious difference, like with our pink one, is that, you know, we've got bicep swivel, the double jointed, the forearm swivel, um, but really it's the difference in the yellows. So I, I feel like our yellow on the right side is, uh, it's a different yellow, even a slightly different shade than our two back release over here. Not by a lot and not, I don't know if it's enough to even see that on camera, but enough to me that at least against this one, you can really uh, see a difference. What's also nice to note um, that on all of our remastered releases that the white that's painted on, I think it looks like they've done a few more coats because on this one, you can even kind of see that the yellow is coming through just a little bit because they needed more layers of white, but they've definitely got that corrected over here and it looks great. Besides that, the obvious things that we've already seen on our other figures, like the paint apps on the belt as well, and not a ton of change at the leg level. But like with our uh, other releases, you can see that the white on the boots uh, does look a little bit wider than on the original release. And finally, here's what you can expect to pay on eBay for these figures. Again, all of the metallic releases are a little bit more expensive than the other releases just because they're getting harder to find now, just because they were a Hasbro Pulse exclusive. Otherwise, I believe the Jason one is one that you can still probably get for retail or less because I think it's still available at retail and that was a GameStop exclusive. Otherwise, if you're looking for a standard Trini, the remastered is definitely the way to go. And finally, we're looking at the Red Ranger. So what's interesting about the Red Ranger releases is that the Armored Red Ranger was actually the first one released and he was released as part of a two pack with the Gold Ranger as well. What's also unique about his release is that he actually came with a complete set of weapons to even form the cannon. And this was even before any of the others were released. So again, it was interesting that this even came out the way it did. All of the weapons are the same exact ones that eventually came with the Rangers once they were released. And these do come apart. It's just easier to show it to you in this way. Besides that, he also came with the Blade Black blaster in closed mode and also came with the blade blaster in blaster mode so it didn't come with the blade blaster in the blade mode so that was interesting but the fact is that they definitely already had the mold they just chose not to give it to us for several releases he has gripping hands and a pair of fists of course here is one of the civilian heads he came with because then he also came with this one and the one on my left is also the one used for the regular release so this armored red ranger is also still the only one that properly comes with the dragon dagger holstered on his his left side the way that he appears in the show and then we eventually got our regular mighty morphin red released right here and as you can see he is effectively the same as our first release uh, minus the armbands and the 
uh, dragon shield as well. Again, he comes with the power sword. And the note about this thing is that, as you can see, the black paint on there rubs off really easily. Uh, the hands on mine, I don't know if you can even see it, uh, the black rubbed off right onto the hands. So uh, not great there, but they do appear to have uh, fixed that on later releases. Of course, he has his blaster in blaster mode and no other alternatives. He has the gripping hands on, and then of course a pair of fists and also a lightning effect and you might wrap it on something like this. Next up, we have our metallic red release. And while it's just the same as our previous metallic releases in the sense of having the somewhat glittery, somewhat see-through body, we also actually have an updated head. So taking a look at the head versus our other head, and I'm using this one just because it's using the same head as that one anyway. And you can see how much of a difference that there is between those two. The other Rangers all had updated heads as well, but this one has the most stark difference and a badly needed update and we got it first with the metallic release of course we have our power sword and similar to the other metallic weapons the plastic here is the same as the plastic used on the metallic body he has a pair of gripping hands and a pair of fists we have a lightning effect different from the other one of course here is the zeo crystal and finally a civilian head for rocky next up we have our trini red ranger figure and again this one was actually part of a two-pack with our jason yellow ranger uh, figure and what's cool about this release though actually is that it's actually using the updated remastered body as opposed to using the older female body so that's really nice that they did that the downside similar to the yellow ranger one is that they're using the regular size head and they did not scale this down to match the female size however at least they are using the updated head as you can see here they are approximately the same head just differently colored obviously and here's the power sword and they switched it to a black paint Although I think it still looks like it's kind of like rubbing off anyway, so that didn't quite fix the rubbing off issue. So there you go. Trini gets all three forms of the blade blaster. Here are the two. And then she's got the other one holstered already. She has two gripping hands and she gets a fist and a flat hand, which is typical of our female characters so far. We get a, another uh, energy slash lightning effect. And finally, our civilian head. This one does look good. She does have short hair in the comics during the period that she has the powers of the red ranger so a uh, pretty good job there finally last but not least we have our mighty morphin red remastered ranger so just like the other remastered figures we do have different paint apps so we've got black lines running along here our power coin in the belt you can see much more prominently than before the paint apps on the chest are updated as well as the diamonds on both the gloves and the boots. And comparing the new one versus the original, you can see the heads are just so much different and it looks much, much better on the remastered version. Like our other remastered Rangers, we do have this energy effect that would be surrounding him. He gets the same power sword. However, it is updated in terms of paint apps because if we compare it to the original, you can see that the uh, gold on it is much more prominent. We have the uh, little green dots now painted on the way they should be. And we also have gold on the handle as we should as well, which we didn't have on the originals. He of course comes with all three versions of the Blade Blaster. He has gripping hands and a pair of fists and just like the rest, a pair of special hands specifically for holding the Power Morpher, which you can see here. And just like the others, you can see the coin nice and prominent and it is red for the Red Ranger. Now, what's interesting about the remastered release is that he doesn't come with a civilian head. So you are out of luck if you get the remastered one, if you're also looking for civilian head. However, I do wanna show the uh, civilian head for the Yellow Ranger Jason version, uh, in case you want to use this one. Here are all three of those heads together. So you can see how they compare. They all actually have a pretty good likeness to the original actor, I would say. So on screen now are the prices that you can expect to pay for these figures on eBay. Of course, the remastered is still the current version that you can get. And I would say definitely don't pay more than retail if you don't have to for the remastered version. That's definitely still the best of the bunch. Otherwise, you might still want to get the San Diego Comic-Con Red Ranger because it, again, is still the only one that comes with the proper Dragon Dagger holster. So here we have the green and white Rangers. I am doing both at once since there's only the three greens and the two whites anyway. Plus, they're all Tommy. So with that said, here is our, of course, our Bandai flip head so that you can see how he compares to the rest of them. I always found it kind of weird that the original flip head had the diamond design for the boots and the uh, gloves. I even noticed it as a kid, but... I guess they, the makers at the time either didn't think that kids would notice or just figured they'd cut the corner anyway. So whatever, in any case. Dragon Sword!
As far as our Green Rangers go, the Spirit Green Ranger was the first one released, and that was released as part of a two-pack with a putty, and I think that was also the first putty that we got. Now, if you're unaware, the Spirit Green Ranger is actually not part of the Mighty Morphin series technically, as it appeared in the Dino Thunder series, and even further, it really only appeared in a, like, a mind dream sequence kind of thing in any case it's still something that you might be interested in so that's why we're showing it and as you can see one of the biggest differences is the fact that the holster is on the left side and not the right side or technically his right side not his left side and it is also white instead of being black the way it normally is on top of that his morpher is white instead of being gold and he also has a silver design on his helmet so comparing our first and second release of the green ranger you can see that the helmet is the same and really it's just the the fact that the helmet has the silver paint on top which looks pretty much like how we saw it in the dino thunder series when he had this form now he also comes with a sword of darkness even though he didn't actually have it uh, in dino thunder he currently has a fist and a gripping hand and also comes with a flat hand and a hand for playing the dragon dagger he comes with an energy effect to wrap around the sword of darkness and here is our civilian head for tommy this is uh, one that has a ponytail next up is our standard green ranger release and as you can see he is effectively the same in terms of the mold he also of course does come with the sword of darkness but at least technically he is supposed to have one since he did within that show he has uh, two gripping hands on that release and his additional hands include a fist and another flute playing hand and finally we have our tommy head this time with a green bandana and i like this one a lot i like the green bandana and then we have our remastered release so if you're unaware the dragon shield and armbands actually come with the remastered red ranger so you have to get the remastered red ranger in order to get the complete green ranger that's probably because that way they can sell an extra figure which is kind of shady but hey that's hasbro and like our remastered figures, he also comes with the energy effect that can surround him. He also comes with all three Blade Blaster forms, even though he, you know, has the Dragon Dagger anyway. He has two gripping hands, two fists, the hands that come for the Morpher, but he also still comes with a hand to play the flute, which is nice. And here is his Morpher. Uh, it is gold the way it should be. And uh, you can see his uh, coin in there very prominently, which is nice. So good job there. And it comes with the green candle. And here is our civilian head, stylistically the same as our previous head, but as you can see, uh, it is a different mold. Or maybe that's just differently painted. It's kind of hard to tell. Here are the three Green Ranger heads that we have. And for comparison's sake, you can see that the head on the remastered is much, much better than the head on the original release. Also, what's nice is that the gold looks really good on the remastered version. Not that the gold is bad on the previous release, but it's just much, much nicer. Also interesting to note is that the neck is much more prominent here on our remastered release than on the original. On the original, it kind of looks like he doesn't even have a neck and that always kind of bothered me. And I think that did bother other fans too. So it's nice that Hasbro actually put in some work in the engineering to make sure that uh, the neck actually can be seen. On the left side is the uh, previous release of the Green Ranger and on the right side is the remastered release. As you can see, they've done more paint applications which makes it look better. And another interesting note is that the dagger holster is um, much different on our remastered release than in our standard release. So this is the more accurate holster since it should go the whole way down as opposed to this one. This one matches more of the regular Rangers in the style uh, other than being black. And while this one technically didn't come with the shield, and it did come with the blade blasters. I do believe that when he didn't have the shield that his uh, side holster was supposed to be white like the rest. So um, if I can find a picture, I'll do that side by side and we'll be able to confirm that way. Otherwise, still a good looking release right there. We have our White Ranger, which is one of the very first figures that we got out of the entire line. As you can see, he's got the Saba holstered in already. As far as hands, he's got a gripping hand for Saba and then he's got a fist and then he only comes with a flat hand. He gets two different energy effects and technically they both can attach to Saba just in different ways. And finally our civilian head and this head is the same as our first head. And then we have our metallic release. As you can see it is the same mold as our first release. He has the same set of hands of a, a gripping hand and a fist but then he actually comes with a fist 
and a flat hand, so that's nice. He comes with an energy effect, which is different from the previous one. This one comes with the completed Zeo Crystal. So if you look closely, you can see that these are all of the individual pieces that came with the other five. And then here is our civilian Tommy head. Here are the two White Ranger heads that we have. And of course, I'll put up on screen how much you'll be able to find these figures for approximately on eBay. And of course, you should still definitely just get the remastered one for the retail price. So realistically, you're going to want the remastered Rangers. They are definitely the best of the bunch. There are some reasons to get some of the other ones like the metallics because they're so unique and different. The armored Rangers, you're probably going to want to get too. I am a little bit miffed still on the holster being uh, different on the Green Ranger, but hey, what are you going to do? It's still a pretty solid release overall. Let me know in the comments which ones that you think you might end up collecting in it. Otherwise, if you want more Power Rangers, then check out my giant Megazord video over here.